Hello, my name is Chloe Filmer and I am a sports massage therapist. I'm um, self-employed, I've been self-employed for 16 years and currently um, I, my work is going into people's houses so I, I travel and I, I'm mobile and I go to people to give them sports massage therapy. Um, I've previously worked in lots of osteopathic and physiotherapy clinics um, and I've worked in professional sport, particularly professional rugby. I travel with clients um, who um, are part of a big cycling team and I look after them and I do various, various other little things as well. Primarily I treat people in pain um, to stop them getting injured, to help them back from injury, people who've got headaches, anything from professional sports people to office workers with bad posture anything that hurts in the soft tissue category, which is muscles, tendons and ligaments, um, I treat and I help through massage. How did I get the job? Um, I did a course after I graduated from university straight away. So my degree was in, um, or is in sports science, which I loved. I always thought of me I wanted to do something in sports injuries. And whilst I was at university on a holiday, back home, I actually had signed up for um, a beginner's massage course at the London School of Sports Massage and that's then where I went on to apply for, to do, I graduated in the July, I started my course in the September so I sort of went straight through. It's almost a year course, or it used to be, um, and it's one weekend a month and then in between you do lots of um, practice people and you do assignments and then you have a, an exam at the end. Um, now there's quite a big project at the end which qualifies, um, it used to be a BTEC qualification and now I think it's equivalent to degree level. Um, so it's all, all our statuses have been raised so it's, it's equivalent to a degree but you don't need a degree. I think you needed just a science in GCSE but you would have to, to, to check that out. But it was very doable I because it was all sort of you can't get paid while you're training, I, you can accept donations. But I had a, another job, a paid job, and also I'd, through my own being, been in touch with um, a professional rugby club while I was at university the year before. I just phoned up, spoken to someone, asked to go down there. Um, they said, well, not at the moment, you can next season. I phoned back and that guy had actually left, and I mentioned his name and just said he said I could come down. Um, and the physio department were very, very lovely people. I just thought I was going to observe for a day but they were very laid back New Zealanders and it actually took me six weeks of phoning every single week just asking if I could come down. I was never put off, I never felt like I couldn't phone but they were just very busy but I phoned for six weeks straight until they told me, um, yep, yeah, come up and then I didn't look back really. I went up for one day, thought I was going to observe, was given my own massage table and just told to get on with it. Massive professional, professional rugby players uh, like that played for countries I worked and then the guy, the main massage guy there said, oh, do you want to come back tomorrow? And I said, yes. And um, I sort of did that whilst I did my course. So as I learned on my course, I did things at, at the rugby club and on the guys. And it was, it was incredible. And I had a year of not being paid. And then the main guy went to England um, and permanently and I took over. And um, it, it was incredible, but I had two jobs and I wasn't getting paid and none of the guys knew I wasn't getting paid I just I, the experience was just incredible and and I wouldn't have changed it ever um I'm very sporty I always have been and I love rugby which helps but I also have a keen interest in cycling um, I travel with a cycling club now when they go away when they tour countries and do different things um I've worked with professional footballers I've worked with I, I have a general love of sport but it's not just sports people general people, office workers, you get to, to know different professions and things, it's, it's very interesting um, what sort of demands are placed on, on their bodies, um, but yeah generally I, I like to get fit myself, um, so it keeps your hand in and, and you sort of can communicate with people on, on different levels. A typical day, um, a typical day for me is um, I have two young children who are eight and nine. So I get up, I might do a bit of exercise early or walk the dog or run with the dog and then I get them to school. And then I basically have from school drop off um, to
to just sort of half two to, to do work really so I go off to the clients houses some are very local some are a bit further away I treat at their houses I could have two jobs I could have five jobs whatever I can fit in and whatever I need to do that day which is the nice thing about being self-employed um, and I, I go up to their house, I set up my bed, I treat them, I have to then do notes and various paperwork. I do that sort of after I leave and I, get, I go on to the next person. Um, it's nice, you're, you're quite on your own, which I found difficult at first years and years ago when I left the rugby club. Um, because you go from a very sort of social environment to you talk to people because you talk to your clients and you like your clients. But I, I'm quite on my own. Um, and then if I haven't walked the dog in the morning, I'll sit and walk in the dog. I sort of treat my day as I, as I need it. And then I'll pick the kids up from school. I will do dinner and everything. And then actually when my partner comes in from work at about five-ish, I then go back out three out of five days. It used to be four out of five days. I will go back out to work and work the evening because the thing um, with any sort of, not le all leisure industry jobs, but sports massage, personal training, anything that where you're giving a service, you often have to work when they're not. So I'm very used to, before the kids, I used to work a lot later. Now I get home between sort of 9 and 9.30, depending how close the client is. How I, I do a lot of husbands and wives, so I do a lot of people together and a lot of families, so I'll stay in one house and do like lots of people. Um, but I'll generally get home between 9 and 9.30 and then it just all starts again the next day. I have a day off during the week and I often, every other Saturday, I'll work. It used to be every Saturday because you just have to provide a service when other people aren't. At the rugby club, if you were when I was in pro rugby, you'd get a day off in a week and then you'd be needed for match days and sometimes if there was travelling and things. Um, but yeah, generally, it's it's a nice day. It's it's, it can be very, very busy. It can be a bit more laid back. You can factor in what you need to do um, and fit in clients as, as you can. Um, I don't know if I've got a memorable moment. So, uh, I, loved, I loved working in, prof in professional sport. I did it right at the beginning. Um, and uh, just seeing a player injured a newer part of the team that helps them get back on the pitch and then seeing them play is is brilliant. Being part of that medical team is lovely um, and feeling like you're really helping. Um, but I've, I've had clients where they've had horrific headaches for years and something I've done has been able to release them and, and make them better. I've I've helped people who haven't been able to sit on the floor with their children and play or run with their children, sort of aided them towards it, running and, and being able to sit on the floor with their kids. Sometimes it's the tiniest little things that you help with and you're just doing what you do, but it helps them a lot and it's just lovely. Um, the worst part of my job, you take it as it's your job. You don't do this job if you don't like touching people or you don't like talking to people. It's, um, I have some amazing clients. My oldest client is 92. He's brilliant. He's just, you would never think he was 92. I have some children that you have to treat sometimes, not babies, but sort of eight, nine, when kids start to grow and they might get growing pains. Um, you touch people. They're sometimes sweaty. They're sometimes smelly. If they've come from the office, they, uh, but people are, are people. It's what you get used to and it's what you accept as part of the job. It's not a worse part. It's just, it's just a part. You have to work quite unconventional hours, I suppose, if you want, if you're thinking about nine to five jobs, it's not a nine to five job. Um, but you generally do it because you enjoy it and you just accept that that's just the way you work. You have a very different working when I left university, my majority of my friends went into 9 to 5 and I just had such a different routine to them. It took a while for them to understand, for me, that I would miss social things uh, because I would have to work the evenings, but it's just what you do. It's You, you accept it if you want to do your job. Um, uh, best part of my job, like I said before, is just helping people, which sounds ridiculously corny, but it, it, I, I like, it's nice be able to give people a bit of relief from pain there are a lot of people out there in a lot of pain and they think it's just normal to live with it and and it's not and if you can help in any tiny way then 
it's it's brilliant. Um, key skills. Think you're self-employed, so you need to be organised, you need to be fairly proactive, you have to be able to communicate. So much of our job is being able to talk to people because you'll ask questions at the beginning and they might not answer you, then while you're massaging, they'll go, oh, I did this, and, you, and you'll go, oh, that's why that's happening, and, and you sort of have to piece it together, and a lot of it is whether people feel comfortable with you because they're taking their clothes off in front of you, so uh, basically... Um, and you, you have to be able to make them feel at ease whilst being able to maintain professional but friendly. So it's a lot, a lot on communication. Um, advice, it's hard. Sport is hard. Um, try and make connections, try and make links, volunteer, offer to shadow people. It's very difficult to shadow people like me in clinic because unless you know what's going on, you can't really describe it as a unless you sort of know what someone's doing it's really hard to describe as you're doing it so you just watch someone getting massaged and it, it wouldn't look like much but do lots of research there are lots of schools out there now the london school of sports massage the north london school of sports massage there's one down in southampton in brighton over in um, cardiff there must be all over now and and it's anything there's openings anywhere if you have a particular interest in something go for it and just ask people and um and get experience if you can um i hope this has helped bye